This is exercise 223. Exercise 223 states, as part of a classical experiment on mutations, 10 aliquots of identical size were taken from the same culture of the bacterium E. coli. For each aliquot, the number of bacterium resistant to a certain virus was determined. The results were as follows, and they list off 10 numbers. What I've done here is I've copied that list of 10 numbers, but I've rearranged them to go from smallest to largest. This will be most helpful on creating our frequency distribution for part A and also for creating the median, uh, finding the median in part B. Part A asks us to create a frequency distribution and display it as a histogram. What we have here is we've got numbers that range from 13 to 26, uh, essentially uh, a, a difference of 13, um, 13 points. So in order to create a frequency distribution, we are going to have to create several bins and measure the frequency of, um, of how, how often uh, a number that fits in that bin shows up in our data set. Um, there's no exact rule, um, but we can, um, we can say create uh, three bins of size 5 or five bins of size 3, and that will give us complete coverage of our data. So. I'll do it in two different ways, and uh, you can choose to uh, do it how you see fit. But uh, let me create a frequency distribution here. Okay, and that consists once again of our bin and the count or the frequency of data points that fit within that bin. Okay, so if I make a bin of size 5, that would go from 10 to 14, not 15, because if we include 10, that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and that's 5. Okay, and we see we have four numbers that fit there, 13, 13, 14, and 14. Then we go from 15 to 19, and we see we have three numbers from 20 to 25, or I'm sorry, uh, 24, we have two numbers that fit in there, and from 25 to 30, we have one number that fits in there. And that would be a completely acceptable frequency distribution. Um, again, I said uh, you can make bins different sizes. So if I make another one, this time the bins being smaller, uh, I might start this time. Um, going from 12, 12, 13, 14. So there's going to be um, only three numbers in this bin. And here, once again, we have four numbers that fit there. Uh, 15, 16, 17. So I'm just going to write 15 through 17. Contains three numbers. Uh, 18, 19, 20. Only contains one number. 21, 22, 23 contains one number, and 24, 25, 26 contains one number. So there we have two frequency uh, distributions. And then it asked us to make this as a histogram. So um, for this one, I will make uh, the histogram for this, uh, this frequency distribution down here. And what that looks like is uh, on the vertical axis, we have the frequency, and across the horizontal axis, we have the actual bins. So here I'm going, uh, it's going to go from 10, and our cutoffs are, I'm going to use the, uh, the left hand number here. And I'm sorry, uh, I realized this is actually 29. 30 would be included in the next bin. Okay, and on the frequency we mark 1, 2, 3, 4. And so here our first bin contains 4, our second bin contains 3 items, our next bin contains 2 items, and our last bin contains 1 item. Okay, and that's the frequency. Uh, or the histogram for that uh, that frequency distribution.
and then I'm going to make uh, the histogram for this one over here. This time our bins are are skinnier, and our cutoffs are uh, not 10, but 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. Only uh, three numbers in each bin, and once again, 1, 2, 3, 4. So here we have four numbers in this bin, three numbers in this bin, and then one number in each of these other bins. Okay, and so these histograms are graphic representations of the exact same data. All of the data points here are exactly the same. However, our choice of bin size has affected the way our histograms look. They still look similar, but they are distinctly different. Um, they are just different representations of the same data. Okay. Part B asks us to find the mean and the median of the data and to mark their location on the histogram. The mean is found by simply adding up all of these points, okay, all of them, and you'll have to, uh, and dividing by the number of points we have, and we have 10 of them. Okay, you'll have to take it from me that if you add up all the points, that adds up to 167. Divided by 10, we have a mean of 16. 0.7. To find our median, we use the formula um, n uh, plus 1 divided by 2, or I believe the book says times 0.5. It's, uh, it's the exact same thing. I'll, I'll go ahead and do 0.5. And n is the number of points that we have. So we have 10 points. So here we do 10 plus 1, which makes 11, times 0.5, and that equals 5.5. That is not the median. This is the rank of the median, OK? That means the median is the 5 and a half number. In other words, it is the number between the fifth and sixth point in our data set. So if we count across our data, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The fifth and sixth data point, in this case, happen to be the same number. And so the five and a half number okay, is a number in between there. That number will be 15. So here our number is 15 for the median, and our mean is 16.7. It asks us to mark their locations on the histogram, and I can do that right here quite easily. Uh, the 15, that is the median on this histogram, and 16.7 will be somewhere in between here, um, maybe about right there, and that is the mean. On this histogram, we have the median right there, and once again, 16.7 is going to be somewhere in between 15 and 18, and that there is the mean. And that is problem 223.